sacrifice was made as the heavens
falling down to worship to sing a song of ages to him and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to him sing it out his name in your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them all and the angels cry All creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, you're holy forever. And if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, Sing song forever to him. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, we'll sing the song forever to him. We're gonna sing the song, we'll sing the song forever and amen. And the angels cry. that cry today all thrones in all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them we're going to sing that out again come on every voice in the room your name is the highest and your name is the greatest in your name all stands above them there's no one like you
there where you're at. We just lift your hands all across this place and sing. Just lift your voices. Just pray and thank him. He is holy. There is no one like you, God. You are the only, only one. All powers, all dominions bow before you. There is no one like our God. There is no one like Jesus. So right here, right now, our first worship of 2024 in this place, God, we lift you up right now. We lift you up, God, and we give you praise, Jesus, for there is no one like you. There is at no other name will every knee bow but your name, Jesus, that at your name, Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Every power, every dominion, every darkness has to flee at the name above all names. Jesus is that name. And because that name, we are overcomers. And because that name, we are victorious. Not because of what we do, but Jesus, what you have already done. So God, right now, may I worship be all for you. May our hearts and our attitudes, our minds be turned towards you. Because there is no one, there is nothing greater than you right now in this place. Put aside all the distractions, put aside all the worries, put aside all the fears, put aside all the discouragement and right now. Let's sing that all powers, all dominions. Do that bridge, guys. I want to sing that part. Man, that's powerful. There is is the highest your name is the greatest your name it stands above them there's no one greater all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name for you today and that is our cry of worship today that you are holy that you are powerful that you were in control over everything so we just pray that your spirit moves in this room as the service continues it's in your name that we pray amen thank you for watching
We're starting this new series called Pre-Decide. And what Pre-Decide is all about, it is about making intentional choices now so we don't have to react to circumstances later. Uh, Making decisions now today in the calm so that when the crazy and the chaos comes, we're not caught off guard. We know exactly where we need to stand. Maybe for you, uh, as it should be for me, is to get in better shape. Uh, maybe that's a pre-decide that you're going to do. I'm going to get in better shape. I'm going to lose some weight. Uh, I'm going to uh, be a little bit more active, be a little more active. I'm going to play pickleball seven times a week instead of four. I don't know what it is for you, but maybe that's your predetermined thing. You know, I know years ago, my goal was I want to lose 50 pounds this year. And the next year rolled around, it was like, okay, let's be realistic. Not 50, let's do 15. Let's just go with 15. So let's make 15. That's a couple meals. I can do it. 15 pounds. The next year rolls around, I say, you know what? I need to have a realistic goal of what my weight really needs to be. I'm okay with my weight. You may have a problem with it. I don't. So I'm okay with it. So I'm like, I'll go to the gym three days a week. And so maybe that was there. It was three days a week. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I'll drive past the gym at least three days a week. You know, I don't know. But that's kind of how my weight loss thing has gone. Uh, maybe it should be more spiritual. You're going to read your Bible more. You're going to do devotions. You're going to maybe memorize scripture. Uh, maybe your goal this year is to uh, spend more time with the family. You're going to set aside things to stretch. Maybe put down social media, put down the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, phones and the computers and the technology. Actually spend some time. Netflix binging will go on the back burner because family time is more important. Maybe it's to get your finances under control because you overspent. Uh, I, I heard the other day that this past Christmas, this past holiday season, was one of the largest largest shopping seasons that we've had since pre-COVID. Uh, very, very much a lot of money being spent. Maybe it's to do better habits. Whatever it is, so many times we have these habits that we are to start, habits we are to break, and this seems to be a time that we kind of do it. We kind of set up a time. 2024, January 1 or January 2 or January 7th, I don't know when you're going to start it, but at some point a habit needs to form and begin. No one goes into Thanksgiving saying, I'm going to start a diet. If you do, you're insane. Um, no one starts the holiday season thinking, I, this is the time I'm going to start. So this is what today and starting this year, January 7th, 2024, I want to be for all of you. I want to challenge you to pre-decide. Pre-decide, and over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about different areas to make a decision about in your own life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the thing. We see people, we see them successful, either in their bodies, or we, we think what we define as success in their bodies, or what we define as success in finances, or define success as a job. Many times what we see is we see the end result of something more that's happened behind the scenes. That's the key. The key is no one has ever uh, accomplished anything really successful without there being something that's happened in the background to get them to that place. It just doesn't happen overnight, right? Everybody says, yes, that's right. Whether it's financial success, physical success, uh, a job success, relational success, none of it just happens. It happened by a product of something else that took place. So here's a key thought. I want you to write this down. If you don't have this already in your notes, write this down. It's not the big thing we need to focus on. No, no, no. It's the small things. It is the small things no one sees that results in the big things that everyone wants. Everybody wants something, but they don't quite know how to get it. But let me tell you, they didn't get it by just going there. They got it through small steps making it happen. There was a movie out many years ago that best illustrates this particular point. And that is, What About Bob? Uh, and some of you have never seen the movie. I know that I'm talking in context that I'm only hitting about 50% of the crowd right now. But I'll explain to you what it is. Even if you didn't see the movie, you'll understand this when I say this. What About Bob was a man who had some serious mental health issues. He was afraid of everything. Like he was afraid of the wind. He was afraid of breathing. He was afraid of everything. Wouldn't leave his apartment afraid. 
And he goes and he finds a counselor, and the counselor gives him his book and says, read this book. It's all about what he says. It's all about baby steps. Baby steps. Everybody say it with me. Baby steps. Baby steps concept in What About Bob, even though it was a, a movie that was funny and comical, it's really, really funny. If you get a chance to see it, you have to see it. Because in the process of the movie, it's all about this character, Bob, who un- discovers that it's just one little step at a time that leads to great success. And that's essentially what I am calling all of us to do today, is through the power of God and through the Holy Spirit, little steps to make big changes. For example, let's say uh, I've had people in my life that, that I've looked up to that have been these amazing prayer warriors. I mean, I knew that if I had something I needed prayer about, I could go to this person and they would call down heaven. And it seemed like the minute they started praying, heavens opened up, light shone down, and God himself was coming down to touch that situation. I don't know if you've ever met anybody like that. I've met people like that. And I remember one time I asked this individual gentleman, I said, why is it or how is it that you just seem to have this connection with God and just this powerful moment? He said, well, he said, years ago, I just wanted to just have this relationship with God in such a deep way. And so I just started spending time with him. And he said, no, it wasn't much. It was like a minute and maybe five minutes. It wasn't much. But as I spent more and more time and I was more and more intentional, five turned to 50 and turned to an hour. And this gentleman, the reason why heavens opened up is because he spent four to five hours a day in prayer. I mean, just walking with God. It was powerful, but it didn't happen. I saw him as a result of what he did back here, the small steps, the baby steps he took to get to where he is. I've met people who quote scripture like this, like popcorn. I mean, it's like bam, bam, bam. They can recite scriptures. They can can memorize it. They can quote it. And it's just really powerful to see what they do. How do they do it? One verse, one chapter, one book and one year at a time that they continually put it inside them. Uh, it's, the, it's not the cumulation that makes it success, successful. It's the small steps along the way that makes us successful. It is making determinations, pre-deciding now where we want to be down the road because the decisions you make today will determine who you are tomorrow. The decisions you make right now set you up for where you will go tomorrow. So today, I'm going to set a foundation for Predecide, this series, and the next couple weeks we'll go into it a little bit deeper. But here's the foundation I want to set. If you have your Bibles, look to Zechariah chapter 4. We're going to go in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 4, some of you Maybe you have never heard of that in the Old Testament. Zechariah, open up your U versions, open up your Bibles. Zechariah chapter 4. Uh, and before we get into it, uh, I'm going to give you an assignment by the end of the day today, and I'll go more in details in a minute. I'm going to give you an assignment. The assignment I give every single year, but it's even more intense this year. Here's what it is I want you to think of your one word that's going to drive your life this year. And with that, a verse that will reinforce that word. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But before we get into it, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to read. In this particular context of the Bible, the background is this. There's a, there's, a, there's a king called King Zerubbabel. And King Zerubbabel, around 537 B.C., feels led by God to go and rebuild the temple. And so he feels that there is this, there is this drive and desire inside of him to rebuild the temple. But let me tell you something, it didn't happen easily, it didn't happen overnight, it was just go rebuild, his word would be rebuild, and he went, and 18 years later, it came to pass. So what stirred uh, Zerubbabel to feel this? Well, look in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Here's what God says to Zerubbabel. He says, uh, it is not by force, not by strength. But by my spirit, says the Lord. So first and foremost, understand this, that when God puts a word inside of you, when God puts a verse to enforce that word or to confirm that word inside of you, God's spirit will help you do what God has called you 
to do. It's not by your might, not by your determination, not by your sheer willpower. No, in fact, I will tell you that'll fall short every single time. It is by the Spirit of God in you, speaking to you, and encourage you. Only God's Spirit can change you. Here's what it goes on to say. It says, nothing, not even mighty mountains, will stand in Zerubbabel's way. So nothing's going to hold him back from rebuilding the temple. It says, it will become a level playing field before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone on the temple, it says in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it, may God bless it. God uses us to do his work here on the earth. Every single one of you, no matter how mundane you might think your job is, no matter how simple your life may feel, I'm here to tell you that God will use every single one of you to make mighty inroads and powerful impacts into our world. But it's not by your might and not by your power, but only by his spirit. Here's what verse 8 says. Verse 8 goes on to say, Then another message came to me from, from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. If you do a historical study of this particular historical uh, rebuild that took place, you will find, and Ezra talks about it, that though the construction was slow, Zerubbabel started it, and Zerubbabel finished it. He laid the first stone, and he laid the last stone. And what's interesting is the people in Ezra, they came to see the building of this temple. And when they got there, when the people came to visit, it said they cried. They mourned. Now, we don't really know why they cried. They may have cried because maybe it was like, this is a lot. This is way a lot of stuff to do. They may have cried because it was too much and there's no way it could be accomplished. I feel like they may have cried because they felt discouraged. Like, how can we do such a, ma a mighty work? And this is how sometimes we feel in life. When we get a vision or when we get a picture of what God wants to do, we feel overwhelmed. We feel discouraged. We feel like there's no way that God could use me to do that. That's way outside of my lane. How could I ever do that? And yet, through the little bitty steps, God does it. For example, uh, go into get in, uh, let's say, get in a, a, a better shape, get, make healthier choices. That is a hard step to begin. And I would be the last one to lecture you about what that looks like. But I know great people that do. And I would go to those people and say, how did you start? How did you begin? Because for me, it's very overwhelming. Now, go to another thing, debt. When it comes to debt, when it comes to financial stress, listen, I've been against financial stress. I've been against debt. I have stood face to face and overwhelmed in the, in the avalanche of debt. I know the power of God that came upon me to be able to overcome debt, to live debt free, and to live now in a life of completely not indebted to anyone. If you want information about that, I can help you with that. And you may be sitting there going, I don't even know where to begin. I'm discouraged because you don't know how much. I don't know how much, but I know how big God is. Hello? Y'all hearing me? Maybe it's relationships that seem to just crumble, seem so torn down, slow to build, slow to rebuild. Maybe some of you today, you resent the small moves in your life because you don't see the big picture of what God is doing. Verse 10, here's what continues to say, and, and Zechariah says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Bow your heads to me today. Father, help us today to hear these words. We cannot despise the small beginnings because all you call us to do is start, begin. So Holy Spirit, help us to begin today. Amen. Hear this. So many times we get overwhelmed by the end that we never begin. We never start. 
it's too much, so we never get it going. It's, it's too big, I can't do it. No, 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 listen to me. Do not despise the small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see you begin. And listen, God already knows the ending. God already knew that Zerubbabel was going to finish the last stone as long as he started the first. He had to begin in order to see the end all the way through. And some of you today, the word that God might put in your life might seem so overwhelming, but let me challenge you with something. Begin. Start it. Launch out. Do something. Take a baby step from where you're at and see where God can take you. Because I'm telling you right now, you'll never see success. You'll never see the big picture unless you start right where God has you. You've got to start where God has you. When we read the stories in the Bible about all these great people of God, when we read about David and Goliath, we don't think, when we see hear of David and Goliath, we think of this. The small guy defeated the big guy, right? That's all we think about. The small guy conquered the big guy. But let me tell you something. The small guy never would have taken on the big guy if he didn't start taking on a lion watching sheep as a shepherd in the desert. He never would have taken on unless he met up a bear and fought up a bear. He never would have done it if he didn't begin the small steps that led to big difference. He made a decision. Ruth and Boaz. Uh, we read the story in Ruth and Boaz. Maybe you've never heard of it. It's about it's a romance between a man and a woman. You know, Boaz. I, man, that's a great name. I, I should have called myself Boaz. Kevin Boaz. Nice. But instead, I got Kevin Darrell. Nice. <laughs> Boaz. Before Ruth could have and meet this man of her dreams, the Boaz in her life, she was faithful to Naomi and served her unwaveringly. Daniel in the lion's den. We hear about Daniel. and he, he, God, he, he stayed all night in the lion's den, and, and, and God shut their mouths. But before Daniel got into the lion's den, before he got into the thick of it, he prayed three times a day and cried out to God and had a faith in God that did not sway. This is what I'm talking to you guys about. Before we get to the big, before we get to the success, we have to know that there's small decisions and little baby steps along the way. There's a, a, a person that I'm going to talk about that many of you are not going to even care about this name. And really, you don't have to know his name as much as what the lesson is he taught. His name is John Wooden. John Wooden uh, was a famous basketball coach, older years. He actually was... Uh, the UC, uh, the basketball coach, uh, basketball, UCAA, 10 times he won the, the, the title. Seven times in a row he won this back in 67 to 73. And here's what you know, I want you to take away about what John Wooden wanted to teach. And he said this, UCLA, he would set all of his players down, very first practice. And the first practice was the fundamentals. Here was the fundamentals. Take off your shoes. Here's you a new pair of socks. Now, put the sock on, turn the sock a certain way, pull the sock all the way up to your knees. I want you to pull them all the way up. I want you to make sure they're nice and tight and put your shoe on. Now lace your shoes from the top, from the bottom to the top. Make sure they're tight. Make sure it's ready to go. Now get up and feel it. If you don't feel right, sit down and start all over. His whole fundamentals every single year was how to put on your socks. As silly as that sounds. But John Wooden said... If you don't start with a good foundation, you'll get blisters in your shoes, in your, on your feet, and they will make you play worse. Always have good socks. That was his key thought. And so I say to you today, what is the foundation that God wants to set inside of you? What is the socks that God wants you to put on in your life in order to see success as you move down the road? Because small baby steps lead to great a great, beautiful picture down the road. Pre-decide what that is. So here's what we're going to do over the next couple weeks. Today we're going to talk about one word. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about your thoughts. Pre-decide what your thoughts are going to be like. 
Predecide your words, how you speak to people and how you use your words. Uh, uh, predecide habits and what you do with those habits. Predecide your schedules, how you balance your schedule, relationships, finances. Predecide. All of it's going to be predecide how we set ourselves up for success. Here's what David said. David said it this way. David, who uh, slew uh, Goliath and was a mighty king in, in Israel and all the great feats that he did. Here's what David said. David said, there is one thing. He says, one thing I want, one thing I desire, one thing, one thing that I want more than anything. He says, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He focused on one thing, one thing. Paul, you may not know exactly who Paul is, but let me tell you something. Paul was a, a man that was, his name was Saul before his conversion. His name was Saul. He's wrote most of the New Testament that we read today in our Bibles. Uh, and, and Saul was killing Christians, uh, taking their lives. And one day on his road to Damascus to kill more Christians, uh, a light came down, blinded him. Uh, Jesus spoke to him and said, why are you persecuting me? Uh, you, you, are, you need to know that I am the Son of God. And so, and so Saul, at that point, a few uh, days down the road, his, his name was changed, showing that he had a different future, showing that he had a different purpose for his life. He no longer was going to kill Christians, but he was going to build Christians up. And so uh, Paul, Saul is now Paul, and Paul starts going on these missionary journeys. Well, he gets arrested. He gets beaten time and time again. He's put under house arrest. He had a horrible, I'd say, early Christian life. Uh, and uh, older in his age, one time he was on a missionary trip, and uh, he was on a ship, and the ship became crazy. And he was, uh, he was thrown overboard, and the, the ship collapsed, and he was bitten by a snake on land. And he didn't die, and because of the result of it, they said, why is it you didn't die by this poisonous snake? He said, because I serve, and they had a God that was the unknown God. He said, because I know who this unknown God is, and his name is Jesus Christ, and the, the, the people were forever changed. But here's what, saw, what Paul said. Here's what Paul said. He said one thing. He said, what's the one thing? The one thing I do is forgetting what is behind me, I strain on towards what is ahead. So David said, one thing I desire, the one word I would have is dwell. I want to dwell in the house of God. Paul would say, one thing, the one thing I have is forgetting. Forgetting what's behind me, leaving the past in the past, and focusing on what God is taking me into the future. Another individual, two women, uh, named Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were busy, busy, busy. Martha was busy, 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 always doing, 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 staying on top of things, making sure hospitality was at its finest. The house was clean. The dishes were done. The soup was perfect. Uh, the, the bread was just right, soft. Butter was churned just right. I don't know what they did back then, but that sounds about right. She, she made sure everything was perfect. Martha was always about doing, while Mary the whole time sits at the feet of Jesus and just learns. Well, Martha got upset with Mary because Mary was lazy. Lazy, good for nothing, sister. She's Cinderella all over this place. And here's Mary just sitting and being lazy and learning. And Jesus says to Martha, hey, Martha, you're busy about so many other things. You forgot the one thing that was most important, me. Mary chose the one thing that was best to spend time with me. One thing. Jesus had a rich man, rich man come up to him. I'd say, now I'm not just talking about a couple hundred dollars rich. I'm not talking about had a few, few zeros in his bank. I'm talking Elon Musk rich. This guy was very, very wealthy. Very wealthy. He comes up to Jesus and he says, what does it take to inherit the kingdom of God? How can I be a follower of you, Jesus? Tell me what it is. And Jesus looked at him. The scripture says he knew his heart. He knew where he was at. And so Jesus, like Jesus does, he talks to the soul of every one of us. And he says to this man, he says, go and sell everything you have. Get rid of it all. And then come back and follow me. And it says this, the man left discouraged because he knew his wealth was too great. His one thing was possessions. The one thing that held him back was possessions held him back from the greatness of of what Jesus had in store for him. 
What is your one thing? What is your one word? So think about this. Think about this. Here's your assignment today and this week. From me to you. What is your one word? What is the one thing that this year, at the end of the year, you want to say, yes, I baby stepped that baby crazy. I took it. I did it. I mean, what is that one thing? And some of you, it's going to be pretty simple. Like you're going to say, well, this. I'm going to tell you, if it's simple, if it's easy, that's probably not a God one thing. That's your one thing. But I will tell you, sometimes God's one thing pushes us, stretches us, and says, no, the one thing I want you to do is greater than you, only you can accomplish it with me. This is the one thing. Inside my personal life, I've had many different words for many different years. I've been doing this for many years. One thing, one thing. I've been having a verse to kind of back it up, kind of help drive it along. Uh, I have my word for this year. I've, God has given it to me. I'm not going to share it with you guys because it is a personal thing. And I don't, I don't expect you guys to share it with anybody unless you want accountability. That's completely up to you. Uh, mine's not about accountability. Mine is just about what the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me inside my own self about where I need to stand with him. And so, but it may be uh, your one word could be celebration because maybe last year was a year of mourning. And this year, it's a time to celebrate. Maybe this, maybe your one word, your one thing, and, and let me back up to that. And that celebration is really hard because you're still mourning. You're still hurting. You don't even know how in the world am I going to celebrate anything with where I've come from in 2023, right? So how do we get there? What's the one thing that God's calling you to do? Uh, maybe your one word or one thing that God's calling you to is to, uh, is to just be patient. No one wants to hear that. We, none of us want to hear patience, but sometimes that's what God does. Be patient. Those who wait, those who wait, those who wait upon the Lord. This is the power of one word. Uh, maybe your word is to love those who are pretty mean. To be kind whenever the furthest thing that you want to do is be kind. Maybe compassion is the word that God would speak to you, and that compassion is because you can't, you hate them, and your soul of hope, you, your soul of hope, you cannot stand them. And I know that we, we're really Christian. And say, you can't hate anybody. I'm just telling you, there's sometimes you just feel it. You feel disgust. You feel disdain. You just feel like, listen, I, pr I wish God would make them nothing but an oily puddle, right? Because they're just such, maybe the compassion needs to come on you because you don't know what the background is. You don't know where they're going. You don't know where they're at in the background of their life. I don't know what your one word is, but I know that God will deliver it to you. And, and, and this one word, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, it's, uh, rest because you're just going all the time and you're losing your family along the way and you don't even understand why but you're just losing everything and rest is what God says and, and, and you're tired and you're weary and you're, you're struggling in your own life and you don't know what to do but God says rest come to me Jesus said come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest you've been striving trying to figure things out you've been trying to put the pieces together you've been trying to figure out why your marriage isn't happening you've been trying to figure out why relationships aren't coming together you've been trying to figure out why I'm so depressed and discouraged and all Jesus says is come to me and rest in me all you who are weary and heavy laden Come, rest. You're going to take that word and you're going to match it up with a verse. You're going to find a verse in God's word that, that speaks to you. Years ago, one of the things that I had to have was renewed because I was burnt out. I was struggling with just life and, and ministry and struggling with where I was at. And God spoke to my life, spoke to my soul. He said, renew, Kevin. 
This is a year I will renew you. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, it says, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And that was a year of silence. That was a year of patience. That was a year of just being still before God. What is it that God spoke to you today? What is it God will speak to you today? I just want to do this right now. Just one more time. I just want everybody to take a breath. I'm going to have the guys bring the lights down for me, guys. I just want you to take a breath. Just, just right here in this moment in time. Father God, speak to us. Speak to us, God, about the one thing, the one word you're calling us to. We put aside distractions, we put aside our schedules and our agendas and what else we have going on. And right now, we just, in this moment in time, Holy Spirit, would you just speak to us? Some is gonna be faithful, consistent, steady. Maybe some of you today, it's release. Rejoice. What is the one thing, the one word that God is calling you to? Help us, God. Help us to not just have a one word, not just have one thing, but God, like Zerubbabel, the first start is today. And we build from that point on. God, you don't call us to success. You call us to start. You call us to begin. And Jesus says, your word says, he who has begun a good work in you will see it to completion. Your scripture is very clear. You begin a good work in us and you see it to completion. So God, right now, what is it? With head bowed, eyes closed, I just want you just as simple as simple can be. Say, God, what is the one word you have for me this year? Some are going to hear it. Some will get it later. It doesn't matter. But all we got to do is ask him, what is that one word? What is that one verse? What is that one thing you want us to focus on for our lives this year? And as we just get ready to do this song, and, and as you're, you're trying to just pray through and think about your word, you say, how do I come up with a verse? I'm here to tell you with, with the Bible app, with, uh, with the Bible app, all you gotta do is put in that word into the search and they'll have scriptures upon scriptures upon scriptures that will help you get through this year. That's how you find your verse, to go along with your word. As we do this song today, I just want you to do this for me. I know that typically when we go in this time, it's, you wanna kinda stand up and worship and I'm all about I want you to worship however you feel worse, led to worship. I don't ever want to restrict him, but I do want you just to let this song kind of wash over you and just let it kind of take, kind of uh, take it in the words and just listen to the Holy Spirit of what he's saying. Because probably the greatest thing that we all need in our lives today is just to breathe. Breathe raising the chaos of our lives. Take him in and let him find you right where you're at. So just let him wash over you today. And when you're ready to worship, you can do your worship. Red. 
refuge for you the one thing you're calling us to for 2024, the one word that's going to drive 
the course of our life. Though, God, it may be a word that seems impossible right now, God, we just pray that you would give us the strength to begin, that you would give us strength to start this process, little by little, small steps that lead to big changes. Because, God, you're not asking us to be an overnight success. You're not asking us to go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow and it be perfect. But God, little by little, step by step, you will carry us through. So God, I pray for each and every person that's here. I pray for that word you're planting inside their souls. That God, they would write it up someplace. They would post it all over their house. They would make it part of their everyday prayer. Help me, help me in this, that one thing. That God they would let it reverberate from the inside out. They would go and do what you called them to do, this one thing, God. Lord, we may fall short. We may falter. But thank you, God, that you're always there. Thank you that you're there to see us through. Thank you're there to pick us up. Thank you, God, that you are there to help us in our weakest moments. Jesus, you are there that bends down and lifts us up and says, I got you. Come on. Let's finish the build. So God, I pray you watch over each and every person that is here, that you give them your strength, you give them your Holy Spirit, you guide and direct them as only you can do. Thank you, Jesus. As we kind of close out today, I want to say this to you. There is nothing that God if he plants it in you, he will see it through. No matter how big the task may feel, no matter how overwhelming it may come across, he will complete the task that he's planted inside of you. Call on him. Trust him. Pray to him. When you're weak, let him know it. He already knows. He'll carry you through every single time. Come and rest here. Come and lay your burden. Yeah. Mm-hmm.